Good afternoon, Year 2, and welcome to your first history lesson of the week. We're going to start off with our Just Check-in, where I'm going to ask you some questions about your learning previously and um, uh, today's learning, and then you are going to see which of these questions you can answer and get right. So, first one from last week's lesson. What was the first transport to be invented? Pause your screen and write down your answer. Okay, well done. So the first one was boats. So it was things that went on the water. So it's the type of um, transport that went on the water. It was one of the first ones to be invented. What year did the Great Fire of London happen? See if you can remember that. Write down um, your answer, pause the screen and off you go. Okay, well done. And the year should have been 1666. Okay, so that was the year of the Great Fire of London. And in the past, they didn't have light bulbs. So what did they use for light bulbs instead at the past in 1666? What things did they use? Make a list, pause your screen now. Okay, so we might have things like candles, we might have um, lanterns, things like that, that would keep, um, because they didn't have electricity, so they're the things that gave them that, that light, okay. And what different transport do we have today? So make a list of all the transport that you've used or you could use that exists today. Make a list now. Pause your screen and have a go. Okay, well done. So we could have things like aeroplanes, airplanes. We could have um, uh, motorbikes, cars submarines, loads of different types of transport. And I look forward to seeing your list. You can always attach them to your assignment today so that I can have a little look at them. Okay, let's carry on. So today our learning objective is that we are gonna describe trains in the past. Our success criteria, so the things that we're gonna include when we're describing our trains in the past are gonna be, we're gonna include how they were powered, what were the carriages like, how were the insides decorated, what kind of food or drink that you got on the train and how do they compare to modern day trains? So how are they similar? How are they different to trains that we travel on now? So our question is, what were trains like in the past? And we're gonna be describing them to answer this question. So have you ever been on a train? What was your journey like? So pause the screen and write it down now. What was your journey like on that train? Okay, well done. And again, you can attach your answers to us, but I'd love to hear about it. My favourite journey on a train that I've ever been to is I went all the way from Reading, had to change it a couple of places to Edinburgh on the train. And I got to see so much scenery, so many beautiful things, so many beautiful places. It was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed it. So if you ever get to go on a really long trip, it's really good. You get those snacks, get your music, get a book to read and get to watch the world as you go past on a train. Might appreciate it more when you're a bit older. So before trains were invented, horses, donkeys, and oxes uh, pulled wa wagons on, um, and oxen pulled wagons on rails to cart heavy loads from one place to another. So you can see that they had these rails and the rails helped the heavy wagons to be pulled easily. They had done this for thousands of years, okay? The first ever steam engines had been invented about 2000 years, years ago, but they hadn't been used to turn wheels. So they had these engines that were made using steam, but they hadn't been able to make those engines turn wheels and make a train. But in 1769, an inventor called James Watt discovered a way to use steam engines to turn his wheels around. These engines were then used in factories to help machinery work. So add his name to your knowledge organiser or write his name down if you're at home to remember that he was the one that worked out how to get these steam engines, these engines that use steam to work, to make them to turn wheels, which is basically what a train is. So here is a painting of James Watt. How can you tell from this painting that he lived a long time ago? Pause the screen and have a go. his clothes, his hair, the way, he's, the way he's dressed, the way he's posing, the things that he's got around him. You can see that it was a long time ago. What do we call this type of painting? Remember from art, 
what what do we call it and why do they have to have these paintings see if you can remember from our art lesson pause the screen fantastic it's a portrait and they had to have portraits drawn of themselves because they didn't have cameras and they didn't have um videos or photographs or anything like that so they were where they could have their own pictures taken so they had to have quite portraits drawn of themselves so they could then see what they look like and remember what they look like over time Almost 50 years later, in 1804, a man from Cornwall called Richard Trevithick decided to join rails and steam engines together and the first train was invented. So write down his name as well. Okay, so they invented the train, they got, they got the steam engines and they got the rails, which were like the tracks that they were using to walk on and they and put them together. And you can see in this picture, he's showing his invention to the public. You can see the track around there and then you can see the train going on it, going around it. So you can see he's showing them how his invention works. To begin with, the first trains, which were called locomotives, were only used in coal mines. They weren't used for passengers and things like that. They were just used to help transport big boxes of coal. So the rail tracks were laid across the country to help the coal go from one place to another to provide people with heat and energy and the things that they needed. In 1825, an inventor called George Stevenson, so right on his name in the knowledge organiser, drove the first passenger locomotive in the world. George and his workers had built the tracks between the towns of Stockton and Darlington. This was the first time people and not goods had travelled by train. So you can see here, people are travelling by the train, they're going on their carriages and they're moving along. This picture shows the first passenger shown train known as locomotive number one. This photo was taken in 1925 at the 100 year anniversary of its first journey. This was taken later on. But there is the first train and this was taken when it when they celebrated 100 years. But you can see the first train, there's no roofs and they're moving along the track. By the time Queen Victoria became queen in 1837, so about just under 10 years later, just over 10 years later, people had started using trains to travel. The time she was queen is known as the Victorian era, so Victorian times. And it was during this time that lots of changes were happening in Britain. So lots of things were getting better and lots of things were being invented. Being able to travel by train had a big impact on people's lives. For the first time, people could travel quickly and cheaply, so it didn't cost them a lot of money from place to place. People who had never had a holiday before started visiting the seaside for day trips or for a weekend. So seasides in the Victorian times became very busy and popular places. You can see there's the beach, lots of people, because people that lived far away could now get there, but they could use the trains. Another big change was time. Before railways, towns and villages had different local times. Now times needed to be synchronised to be made the same so the train timetables could run smoothly. It was the rail Great Western Railway that first did this in 1840 and soon everywhere in Britain was running to the same time. Railway stations were built all over the countries. Towns often became much bigger after a railway station was built, like Swindon and Crewe. Some towns only came into being because a railway station was put there, such as Middlesbrough. Why do you think towns grew around railway stations? Pause the screen and have a little think and write down why you think they did. Yeah, well done. It's because people wanted to live near train stations. So that if they got so that if people would move and get houses near that train station so they could use it and they could go on the train and they could travel around. How do you think trains in Victorian times were different to the trains we have today? So first of all, make your prediction. Think of some of the things you've seen in those pictures, some of the things we've talked about, and write down some of your ideas. Pause the screen. Okay, well done. Let's see if you're right. So here are some pictures of trains in the past. So what do you notice? Look at the engine, look at the people sitting in it, look at the, the way it's set out, look at the picture of the train. What do you notice? Write down, add to your list some of your ideas of what you notice about how trains have changed and what they looked like in the past. Okay, well done. Pause the screen if you need to. Okay. 
So most trains today are fueled by electricity or diesel. Okay. In Victorian times, trains were powered by steam, which is why they were called steam trains or steam engines. This means that men at the front of the train had to constantly get a fire going with coal to create the steam that was needed. So steam is like the smoke that comes off when you burn coal and you put coal on the fire. So they had to constantly make a fire using the, using the coal to make sure that the steam came up. Otherwise, it would just stop working. It wasn't using electricity or petrol or diesel. It was using that steam. It was difficult and dirty work. Imagine that soot and that dust and that smoke probably wasn't very good for their bodies and things like that. Passenger cars were also different in Victorian times. So where the people sat. So nowadays, we just have very sim simple trains, kind of take um, loads of seats in a row. And someone comes up with a trolley and they'll give you a snack or something like that. But you have to buy it. And then there is first class where they have bigger seats and things like that. But it's still pretty much standard across the board. But in Victorian times, there were three types of carriage first class, second class and third class. First class carriages were for rich passengers. Passengers, To begin with, second and third carriages were open and had no roof, but after a while that did change. But most trains had tight dining cars, so you can see in here it's really posh, there's not that many seats, it's kind of bigger seats and they've got fancy, um, lots of space, so it's not like the rows and rows you'd get on a train now. And first class dining cars were just like fancy restaurants, so being in a restaurant. Meanwhile, in second and third, you didn't even have a roof. So look at this train, what can you see? Write down on your list, pause the screen, and write down things you can see which are different to compared with then. And also they'd be served like really beautiful meals, like now you might get a packet of crisps and a sandwich, they'd be served like really delicious home-cooked meals. Let's see if you can see, you can see. Okay, well done. So, your task today then, um, and it's an assignment on teams, is to, is to compare and to describe the trains in the past. So you've got trains in Victorian times and a box to write in, and trains today. And you've got how are they powered, is one of the questions. What kind of carriages are there? How are the insides of the carriage decorated? So in the past it was very beautiful, it was very, you know, it, some of them they wouldn't have roofs in third and third and second class, but in first class it would be beautifully decorated. Um, what food and drink is served? And so you're going to answer these questions. You're going to write what the train in Victorian times was like, answering all of these questions, and you're going to look at trains today. Now over here I have put um, some sentences that may help you to decide where they go. So for example, trains use diesel and electricity to run. That's going to be how they were powered. Is it going to be Victorian times or trains today? What do you think? It's going to be trains today. So I would write that sentence in this box. Or if you don't want to use my ideas, um, you can make up your own sentences using the video that you've watched today. Okay, so it's completely up to you. Okay, right, I'll, I'll give you your feedback on Teams. I look forward to seeing your history assignments and I will see you later. Um, I have got a little stretch as well though for you. Can you write a paragraph describing what it might have been like to go on a train in the past? So imagine you're yourself, but you're in the Victorian times and what it was like to go on that train, what you would have seen, what you would have heard, what you would have smelt, what would have happened. Okay, and that's your stretch for today. Enjoy, and I'll see you later. Bye for now.